Hello everybody. Well, I've had some of you request that I do an update on this MPP Solar LV5048. Low voltage for North America. 5000 watt, 48 volt on your battery storage. Well, I'll tell you what, I've had it going, I guess, uh, late April is maybe when I went ahead and hooked this thing up. I'll have to go back and check that dates for sure. So May, June, July, it's been going for several months here. We run stuff on it constantly. Uh, we've had numerous things going from dehydrators and incubators and fans and just other household stuff and all in here running on it. And I've kind of tested the limit of what just these two Tesla batteries are able to handle. And um, let me tell you what I found out so far. So as I said, this is the MPP Solar North American version LV5048 low voltage series. Now it is capable of its split phase. It can run single phase, split phase. So you can get your 110, 120 volts, your 220 through 240 volts, or you can wire it to run a 208 leg as well. So that's a pretty versatile little unit right there. Um, questions that came up. Well, Steve had just asked an update about the Tesla batteries. As you know, I'm only running two of these batteries at the time being. So you see right now, there it's the middle of the daytime right now, maybe about three o'clock in the afternoon, and it's at 48.5 volts. And it tends to pretty much stay charged up good all day long. As you see, I've got it set up on output as 120 volts. All right, so a couple other things I want to cover. Had uh, people ask questions, does it make a lot of noise? Well, it's running here in front of you right now. And it's pretty warm here in this room where it's at. And it's running super quiet. Do you hear it? It's a very low tone. Let me get it up close. A very low tone. So the fan's not been an issue at all. If it gets underneath a real heavy load, they will kick up higher. But overall, there's been no problem on that whatsoever. The um, next question I get is, do your things flicker and you know your lights flicker and all without a load on it? Well, that's going to be in your settings. If you put this thing to go into like a sleep idle mode when there's uh, not much draw on it, it's going to cut out the output and so it may cut it out or really limit it down and that's why you're getting that flickering and then sometimes they'll say they can hit their microwave or turn something else on and then boom all the lights stop flickering and all we're talking about in their house once again it's because there is no load on it and you're in your settings you need to go in there get your manual look it up online go to mpspsolar.com and you can load the pdf file there as well and look it up go into your menu and appropriately set it the way you need it for how you want it to act when there's no load if you don't want it to go into a sleep or auto mode turn that off and that should have your problem fixed on that right there of course if you don't have a load on it and you've got it out of auto mode it's still going to be consuming power running you know it's having to keep everything powered up there but um, I just leave mine where it's never, never goes to that idle. And I have no problem with that at all. So I can tell you at this point in time, I'm not running a whole house off of it. It's only been temporary connected here. Why well, I did a test run? Because we will be moving this unit to its permanent location eventually. But it's been a very nice little test run because it has gave us power backup here to our home. It's like having a backup generator, only very quiet. For instance, we had the power to go down in the past few days here. It was out for hours. Um, don't know what happened on the grid, if transformer blew somewhere or what, but the power was down for a while. We had eggs incubating, we had other things going on. It's hot, your deep freeze and stuff will start uh, really thawing out quick in this kind of Texas heat. And this was our rescue right here. 
not a problem uh ran extension cord in here to those um deep freezes boom they're continuing on the incubators were already going on this wasn't a problem they were never paused because we've been running them full time on this anyway so if we had not had this we would have been a real crunch about what to do about our eggs incubating which have since hatched and what to do about our meats in our freezer so this was a very nice backup and once it's put into its permanent position and where it will be at permanently it'll use the grid as a backup and this will be the primary so that'll be a very sweet deal so there shouldn't ever be a power interruption if you lost the grid it don't matter it's still going to continue on running off of itself and um, when you do have the grid and you're not making enough power it can pull power in from the grid so that's a handy little thing for that like i said it's like having a silent generator here now i've had this door off i've just never bothered to put it on it's right here it's just a matter of just sticking it on there in a couple screws um i've just left it off that's where everybody can see in here and see the connections in here on it I've been very pleased with it. I'm, I'm happy. And um, I really, at first I thought I maybe made a bad choice on the Tesla batteries, but I didn't. And let me explain that to you. People will say, you can't get the full use out of those Tesla batteries. Well, you know, sucking them all the way down, max charging way up and all that. You don't need to. If you draw those Tesla batteries all the way down and you max charge them all the way up and you run your cycles like that constantly trying to pull the maximum out of those batteries you can you are shortening the life of those batteries exponentially tesla themselves in the cars don't do that they do not every fully charge these batteries to max and they don't suck them all the way down the bottom either because those cars wouldn't have much life on the road then for very many years if they did that so they are leaving a large buffer in there as well. Then the next thing is you don't create as much heat to worry about controlling if you're not dramatically pulling them all the way down and dramatically charging them all the way to max capacity. So, and the way that I'm using them, they're in a very safe range. I check them constantly. They never even feel warm. They just run right along just as smooth as pie. I will probably go ahead and buy a couple more of these batteries and that's just being honest so there it is you know there's some other options coming aboard if you can find a good deal on these batteries set your settings right in here it's going to be very important set your settings right you do your homework um i i can just tell you before you connect these batteries up with solar panels charging you can connect the batteries and have this on but before it starts charging and putting power in be sure and set these settings in here because you do not want to be overcharging these batteries or drawing them too low that could turn into a catastrophe and that could be very dangerous you could lose your home you could someone get hurt and you do not want that so the very first thing you do when you power this unit on is go in there and set it appropriately for these batteries make sure you turn it off so it doesn't go in the float floats only for lead acid batteries do not put this thing in the float make sure you disable that go through do your homework set your voltage limit on the low end on the high end turn off the float turn it off um, you're going to have to put it into custom menu for a custom battery type and do your homework and make sure it's set right. And once it is, then plug your solar up and um, you should be good to go. Well, I'm gonna get off here on this video. I just wanna do a little small follow-up on it. Um, I can tell you so far, it's worked out great. The unit just runs day and night without any hesitation whatsoever. It's been a lifesaver to us just sitting here even as it is. Multiple occasions, it has come in very very handy hope everyone's doing well out there and appreciate you watching this little follow-up 
video on MPP Solar's LV5048. Any questions, feel free to comment. I'll try to answer your questions. Meanwhile, everybody take care and stay cool.